Hello, welcome to Ephemera Files by Tommy. I was watching a video the other day by Brenda Lindstrom, and I will link that particular video below. And she was making this folded paper pocket type thing from a sheet of paper. And I thought that it looked really cool. And then I thought, ooh, I think that would be really cool to do it this way too. So you can go watch her video to see how she did it because hers ended up way different than mine. But you never know where ideas are going to come from. And I think it's a compliment for somebody to be able to use my ideas as a springboard for their own ideas. So there's my compliments to you, Brenda. I just grabbed a piece of paper after watching her video and started messing around and came up with something I think is kind of fun. And so you just need a sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper. Actually, you could use whatever paper you wanted, but I would suggest starting with this and then play around with your other sides, sizes. This is one of my coffee dyed papers that I call my matzo dyed, matzo paper, excuse me, not matzo dyed, because I think it looks like matzo crackers. I don't know how it happened which is the case with almost all of my papers. <laughs> all right, so I have the paper long ways vertical and I am going to fold to just over halfway. And I'm gonna crease that down. And this is actually pretty quick, the making of this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and decorate it because I have an ulterior motive here. And then you're just gonna bring the other one in and overlap it slightly. Okay, this one went just a little bit for, went, huh, where's my ruler? Let's see, paper's eight and a half and I folded this over two and a half. And so when I fold this one over, it's not gonna be quite two and a half because I want this to look like it's in the center of that fold. So it's gonna come over hmm, about two. That's gonna make it right about the center. And the whole thing ends up being three and three quarter inches wide. So you can adjust your me me measurements. I think I got a little too excited about this pocket. Words aren't coming. <laughs> like I can blame that any other time, you know. Let's go ahead with this. And I then, I don't think I turned over the first one. No, I shouldn't turn it over because I, see, I forgot what I was doing because my mind is already racing elsewhere. I am going to fold this just over halfway up. See, this is just a little bit more than that, okay? I'm gonna crease that. And then this top one is just going to come down to meet. You don't want this to go behind or in front of that other piece. You want to meet that piece right head on. Okay. Sorry. I seem like I feel like I'm saying okay a lot. Now, if I was going to just go ahead and do this to finish it up, which I am going to do this in a bit, I would go ahead and ink around all the edges, but I wanna show you real quick what you end up with. Just by doing those folds, that's all the folding you have. And what you end up with is this. Now my measurements are a little different on this one than this one. You can see I fold it up further and that doesn't matter. It's just fine. This one I folded more to the center and I have here a pocket that's created by that fold and I've tucked an index card into it over this flap. When you pull that one out, this folds up and I have another index card that is in that same pocket and I'll tell you why. And it doesn't have to be an index card, it can be a journaling card or whatever, but that will help when you put this index card in first, remember they're gonna be in the same pocket, just like this, okay? 
but that first index card going in there and then folding this down and putting this index card in keeps it closed. And so you don't have any glue or anything and that is holding it down. Now, that is the basics, okay? You pull this one out and open up that flap and then you can just open this up, you pull this out, but you've also formed a little pocket here in the center where you could put yet another card because when you have it folded, See, I'm going to have to grab another, another thing now. <laughs> when you have it folded, that still holds it closed. I don't, you might be able to, let's see, you might be able to tuck something in up there. Would that affect, let's see, if you're going to do that and you've got something in there. Yeah, so you could actually, let me grab another tag. You could actually put something in this pocket here and something in this pocket down here. And remember, we still haven't glued anything. And when you fold all of that up, this keeper is still going to keep it pretty closed. Now, this is where I went on just a little bit because this could be a free floating thing that just goes anywhere in your journal. And when you take out this one and open that up and take out this one and open this up, take out this and this and this, you've got both sides still completely open for writing space. And it really doesn't matter which one goes over which one, as long as you're not folding all the way one side to the other. You probably could, you'd lose your pockets on the inside. So I'm gonna show you my next steps with this one. Let me just get this one closed again. And see, it's just, it's very simple. Set these to the side. And I'm going to fast forward during quite a bit of this part. I am getting ready to ink all of the edges. All right, so I have inked all of the edges that will be on the outside after it's folded up. And so once again, you're just going to take it and you've already done the folding once. Remember, you're just going to fold a little over a little over the halfway mark and then come back over to about the halfway mark. You're going to fold up whatever distance you want that to be, leaving enough room for this flap and then folding down. And there will be that. Now for another project that I'm doing, I need to make a tab tag with a job. And that just means that the tag does something other than be a tag. And here is my idea for the tag. I also, for this particular thing, need to have index cards. And I've already used one index card, but I'm gonna go ahead and use two more. These just don't happen to have lines on them. These are vintage. They're they're already aged. I probably don't even need to ink them. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there just for a moment. And I'm gonna slide this into the other side of the pocket to hold that closed. And then these, I'm, I need to decorate. And I need to get a brad because that's gonna be part of my design. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to want a brad and a button, so I will be right back. All right, so I have a brad and a button, and they're kind of similar. This is reddish. These are reddish. None of them are really red. <laughs> but I am going to make this a swivel tag so that you can still write on the inside of each of these two tags, if that is what you wish. 
and I need to do some decorating to these. And so I'm going to put them on my paper towel. And I am going to use my stencil. Let's see. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stencil on the bottom and then I'm going to do my reverse, my stencil stamp on the top. And that'll be the two outside parts of the tags. And then I will line the inside with some paper, some writing paper. So I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to do it this way. And I want that to break right about where it changes from the stained glass. I don't really know what it's called. It says the name of it. I don't even see the name of it. I don't remember. I'll, I'll see if I can find it and link it. It's a Tim Holtz collection from Stampers Anonymous. All right, and I am going to use my blue and my green for this part. And I just realized while editing my last video, these things can be really loud. And so I'm trying to be very gentle and intentional when I put the lids down and put the lids on because that was a lot of clickety clacking going on and it was just very kind of annoying and I had to edit a lot of it out. Maybe it didn't annoy you. Maybe you don't notice it, but it was bothering me. And sometimes I like, you know, some of the stuff that's called ASMR. I think I got those letters in the right order, but sometimes I don't. And that's just, that's just me. That's not my gig, but I understand having a gig because also when watching my videos, I realize I do this a lot with my fingers and I think that's a nervous habit. I think it's just something I do. I just didn't realize how much I did it until editing videos and I can't seem to make myself stop even though I realize that I tend to do that. All right, I think that's gonna be good for the the blue. Very carefully and quietly put the lid on. Move it up here. And now I'm going to move on to the green for this part of the tag. And you'll notice I am pouncing through the stencil and not doing this. With the finger daubers, it's actually it's my opinion I guess it turns out better this way obviously it's not going to be solid I think you would have to get a foam um, a bigger foam thing applicator I guess would be the word if you were going to be going like this if you wanted it to be more solid or maybe there's some other way of making it more solid myself I kind of like the airy look that this gives. Oops, sorry. Alright, I'm going to lift this up. Hopefully that moving didn't smudge it too much. And I like that. Let me scoot these a little further out of the way. Now, I am going to dry these real quick. So, cover your ears. All right, for the next step, I'm gonna be flipping this over. This is where I just inked, and see all the wet ink that's still on there? Even if it wasn't wet, I could reactivate it because it is a distress oxide, which means if it gets wet again, it's gonna move again. Now, I don't want to just flip it over though. I want to rotate it so that I've got some of the green 
cathedral window looking thing on this side on the top and the blue flourish on this side on the top. So I'm going to take my little mister here, little mini mister. I think I got this at Dollar Tree and I'm going to spray away. I didn't want to accidentally spray that and cause issues. And I am just going to, let's see, try to line up about where I was before as to the center. And I want to make sure that I kind of meet the top of my previous inking. And I'm going to grab an extra piece of paper so that I can put it down and I can press. And I do this partly because if I get, if I press with my fingers and part of that ink gets on my fingers, I may smudge it all over the place. If I put another piece of paper on top and press any ink that would have run out and gotten on my finger and possibly made a mess will end up on this paper. And I actually didn't have any that ran out, so that's good. But just because it didn't happen there doesn't mean it wouldn't have happened had I just been using my fingers. I like that. And over here, some of the blue did get into the green. I'm not sure how that happened. Probably when I sprayed it, gravity. But I think that's really, really pretty. I'm going to dry these and then I will show you up close. All right, so here they are. Let's see. I'm probably just going to hold it here and then I'll bring the camera in. I think those are beautiful. Whoops, and see, I've got water right there. And so I'm going to use my paper towel and wipe that up real quick. Okay, and I think I want to add some of this washi. Nope. I keep calling it that. It is fabric tape. And I just need to decide. I think I am going to do this. I'm going to put a strip of it right across the center there. But this is really wide and I don't want to cover up that much of my design. So I'm going to cut this down the center. Somewhat. <laughs> and I'll put that, let's see, this side's a little skinnier. We'll use this. I'm going to cut that in half. Before I put this on, I need to go ahead and do my edges. I remembered to do the stamping and stenciling before my inking of the edges. So there those are, and I actually don't think I'm gonna put anything on the back. I think that is perfectly fine for writing space. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel back.
the paper from the fabric tape. it over and just wrap that around. And then I'll do the same for this one. Here we go. Oops, I got a corner that folded up there. I'm just going to kind of draw it out with my nail. All right, now to make a swivel with the brad and button, I need to decide which one I want to be facing forward. And that just means do I want the button or the brad to be facing forward as well. And I think I'm actually going to go with that on that and this on that. Just because this goes better with that flower and this button goes better with that background. And the way I make a swivel tag, I need to punch a couple of hole reinforcers. I have this, if you have um, already printed hole reinforcers, I would suggest that you get four of them because this, let's see, four, six, you're going to need six because this is going to be what makes our tag actually able to swivel. And I'll show you what I mean. These are not going to be glued on to the tag. They're just going to sit on there. Okay. Now, I, I think maybe you might be able to glue the two outside ones. I think that that might be okay. As long as the one in the middle isn't glued to anything, isn't attached to anything. So if you're using the self-adhesive hole enforcers, you could probably get by with four and just make sure that you stick two of them together to make the one in the middle because that's going to be like a washer for us to allow the movement of the uh, tags. So I think I will go ahead and glue these on. Find my glue stick here. Oh, sorry. So you actually wouldn't need any on the outside. I just like them on the outside, I guess. I said this was all in my head up until a moment ago. Although I have made a swivel tag before. I will link that video below if I remember to look it up. It's a little different than this one. It's not exactly the same. You wouldn't be seeing the same video. Okay, and you're actually not even gonna see that whole reinforcer anyway. Now, my brad here, I've got the two prongs. I'm not going to separate them yet. I'm going to go ahead and put them through this hole. Put them through the standalone hole reinforcer. And then I'm going to put them through the back tag. And 
And then I'm going to spread them just a little bit because I need to put the button on them. Now this button has, uh, what would you call those? Slots instead of, instead of holes really. But it works with the ones with holes too. I have done that. It works. All right. Now I folded the legs instead of going out this way. I folded them around that center shank and you would do the same thing if you were using the round um, buttonholes and not the <laughs> I'm losing my words not the one with the this the slit and now I've got my little nippers and I'm gonna nip off the ends Or maybe I'm going to wrestle them off. That didn't want to come off very well. And since I lifted that up, I need to push it back down and in. All right, same with this one. Hopefully this one comes off a little better. I have done this a few times. Usually it works easier. Yeah, that one came off much easier. And I need to push that side down, that prong, what's left of it, down. Now you have another option here. You can take another button and glue it on the top. You could glue a little flower on the top. You could glue a, a jewel, a flat back gem. I'm actually just going to put a smaller circle in the middle of my flower. And I think I'm going to go with yellow. Maybe I'm not going to go with yellow. There's no yellow elsewhere on that page. Maybe I'll just go with another shade. <laughs> no, I think I want to go with yellow. Oh, you know what else you can do? And I think that I will do this after I show you how to do everything. I think I'm going to put liquid pearls in the center of it. But I need to get everything else done so that this can sit. <laughs> All right, and when you pick it up, you can see that it swivels very easily, very easily. And so what that means for our pocket here is that this slides up and over and helps to keep it even more securely closed. If you wanted to, you could glue around the back and make this a pocket that this tag slides down into. And then this would just fold open on your page because you have not made anything that would keep it from folding and unfolding. So the tag is done. My tag with a job is done, which is what Julie calls it. And I just need to come back and decorate my index cards so that I can add this into my journal. I think that was fun. That was a fun little discovery that I made by watching Miss Brenda's channel. I really appreciated that. Put that in there. Let's see. And I don't have room to put one up there on this one like I had on this one. I do have room to put something here. But I don't need to. I'm just showing you how it works. And then that comes in just like that. And our tag will sit right over the top just like that. I like how that turned out. It's obviously not finished. Uh, let's see. I probably won't have a picture with this on the back of it at the end of this video. I will add it into 
another one. And then I will link that video below. <laughs> it's a whole lot of back and forth sometimes when you're working on these things. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. I hope maybe you can take off with another idea for doing something like this of your own. We'll just do this real quick so that I've got both of them out here. We'll put a tag inside and we'll put a tag outside. Now that doesn't work quite as well. It kind of needs the longer item on the outside to help hold it down. There we go. I think that works. All right. That was fun. I thought it was fun. What did you think? Thank you for joining me today. And as always, be kind. Bye.